I'm Tom Handel here at WMPG's Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday with Dale Robin Goodman, Director of Development at WMPG. And it's hard to believe that anybody wouldn't know what this is all about, but there may be somebody who doesn't know what's going on here. So could you explain this, what's going to happen? Well, this has been going on for 24 years, if you can believe that. Um, and so this is, this year we have 11 different restaurants who come up with their best Cajun or New Orleans inspired dish. Some are very traditional, some are really innovative, and they come here to Woodbury Campus Center here at USM, and um, WMPG has hosted this party, as I say, for 24 years. The participants come, they go through the room, as you've seen them do here, and they have a ballot, and they choose their favorites, and um, we award a trophy to the Cajun cooking champ. It's a trophy that they win, is that what yeah, they get? that's what they get and a lot of attention and love from WMPG. And um, it's really a fun day. Our DJs are playing New Orleans music all day. And at one o'clock, which is coming up here soon, um, we've got uh, a live band, the Cajun Aces, the local Cajun stars. What does what WMPG do this? Why? You know, when I came to, the, to this uh, as my work, I, I asked the same question. It's not a fundraiser for us. It really is just a thank you to all the, the people, the USM, to the city of Portland and all its citizens, you know, all its inhabitants, um, who helped WMPG um, exist. It's all our supporters, it's our listeners, it's people who love uh, food in this foodie city. Um, it's just a party. With WMPG, the New Orleans connection really starts with the music. Right, we've always had a music connection to New Orleans, partly because of the French Acadian, which became the Cajun tradition, partly because of that, partly um, after um, Hurricane uh, Katrina, uh, we helped uh, the community station down there um, recover by fundraising for them, uh, recover from the damage that they um, uh, Got, you know, had from the storm. So we've always had a strong connection with New Orleans. Okay, I'm here with Calesta and Mandy from SMCC, and they've got their own offerings. What do you have today? We have red beans and rice. And uh, did you come up with this recipe yourself? Um, we had help from our chef Riscotti. We had the idea to um, do red beans and rice. We wanted to do something that we could make a lot of very easily. Um, and she came up with this like she's like we can do a lot of this and it'll last good and it'll taste even better um, What's your special ingredient or can you give that away? Um, we've got all of our ingredients right on the sign But I feel like andouille sausage is the main ingredient along with the kidney beans. What kind of sausage? Andouille, which is a classic Cajun sausage. And is this the first first year that you're both here individually? What's it like preparing something like this for a, a sort of a competitive atmosphere like this? Um, I guess it kind of like steps things up. You want to make sure everything's garnished and that we're quick and efficient. Uh, have you had any taste testers uh, up to the table yet? <laughs> you have? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've sent out maybe four or five already and we haven't had any complaints, so hopefully. How many students have been involved with the process? Just you two? Um, the there was probably about 10 involved, yeah. Um, well, how did they all get involved? It was in our one of our culinary classes. We had um, Maureen came in and she was like, you guys want to do this? And we were like, yeah. So we came up with the idea in our class and we've had help um, with our class and from others. How does the spiciness in this compare to other uh, dishes, do you think? Just from what I've tasted, I feel like ours, like, I mean, it's probably like, one of the top three in spiciness, but other people have like a honey, like spice sauce that they're putting on theirs, and they're all different kinds of heat. What, what do you look to do after this? You're going to school for this. What, what kind of things would you like to be involved with? Ultimately, um, I love lo working on the line and everything, but I want to be like a chef instructor, like our chef Riscotti, just because I've learned so many things from such great instructors. Great, and you? Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. I really love working on the line. I love the like fast pace of it. I love the feeling of accomplishment when it's over. It's like, wow, we just served like however many people like 
in this span of an hour. Like, that's insane. I just love doing it. I'm here with Jay Norris, and he, uh, you're from? I'm from uh, Jay's Chafalaya Kitchen and Catering. And what are you serving today? I have a slow-cooked uh, chicken and andouille gumbo with a homemade roux, which is kind of rare. I'm from down south, Louisiana, so this is the way I grew up eating it. And we have a shrimp creole here, which is a lighter shrimp stew that is slow-cooked over a couple of days, and it's got a process going on. It's very good. Have you been here before for the WMPG event? Uh, I have not. This is my first time, and I always wanted to bring a little bit of Cajun to the food that I grew up on. Cajun food's a very poor food. It's uh, things that people could fish out of the Gulf of Mexico, that they could take out of the bayous and the Atchafalaya Basin. And I grew up with that food. It was very common down there. So I started cooking a few years ago and sharing desserts and, and uh, gumbos and etouffees with people here in Portland, and they seem to really like it. So, it's sort of like home cooking for you, right, isn't it? This is home cooking for me. Sometimes we made the, the roux a little lighter. Uh, but yeah, definitely during the winter, football season, tailgates, you always bring out the gumbo. We have seafood gumbo, but the Cajun area, Cadiana, which is the Cajun area of Louisiana, they do mostly chicken and sausage gumbo, whereas New Orleans and the Creoles would have basically seafood gumbo. So there's a big difference there. New Orleans is not Cajun, and, and, and the Cajun country is not necessarily Creole. Hi, uh, I'm here with Eugene from Gritty McDuff's, and uh, what are you serving today? Uh, I am serving crayfish and shrimp gumbo today. Okay, and what 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 is what's in it? What does it consist of? Uh, so I got 10 pounds of crawfish, and I boiled them down to use a stock for the base. Um, then I did a nice chocolate roux. Took about 45 minutes under the stove um, with uh, the maripaw, which is celery, green peppers, and uh, onions. Oh, great! And uh, you know, it was like it was like a day and a half process, but you know, as the the smiles on people's faces is well worth it. So. Is this the first time you're here at WMPG? This is the first time, yes. I was chosen to represent Gritty's, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be, be able to do it in the future. So. Yeah, and you, this rice here goes with it? Oh, yes. The rice is getting served as well. That was provided by USM. Um, it looks like a shrimp jambalaya. Oh, okay. Yep. And is this something you serve at Gritty McDuff's? Uh, this is not something we don't serve at Gritty McDuff's, but, uh, you know, uh, it keeps on being hit like this. You know, you never know. So yeah. we give the people what they want. How do you get the recipe? Who came up with the recipe? Uh, I came up with the recipe myself. Um, I, you know, I've, I'm pretty good at making soups, um, so I have a pretty good palate. I'm good with flavors, so, you know, I saw what I wanted for ingredients, and I put everything together, um, and it came out just as expected. So, you know, I like, uh, I like putting smiles on people's faces, so, you know, and that's what I'm doing today, so. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. I'm here with Zach and Logan from Pool Boys and Pickles, and uh, what have you prepared today? We've prepared red beans and rice. And what's, what's, what goes into that? What goes into that? That's andouille sausage, uh, as well as capricola, salami, ham, and then we add some spice and um, a little bit of hog stock. How has it been received here? Well, pretty well. Yep. Everyone seems to be digging it. Is, is this, is this uh, you've been here before, I take it? Oh, yes, sir. This is our, uh, well, my personal third year. Third year? Oh, yes, wow. sir. And are you the chef? Did you create this uh, recipe? Uh, no, I did not create the recipe. It was there before I started, but um, keeping it going. And, and is this something that usually you serve at Port Boys Pickles? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty popular dish. We have a couple other soups, but this is one of uh, the fan favorites, I'd say. What do you enjoy most about being here? I just like the, uh, the music. Everybody seems uh, in a good mood, like to try new food, you know, and uh, I'm excited to go and try some food at the end. Uh, have you... Uh, tasted this stuff yourself and uh, do you eat it regularly? Oh yeah, I love the uh, red beans and rice soup, personally, yeah. I'm here with Colleen and Megan uh, from S Simply Vegan by Silly's and uh, what are you serving today at the Mardi Gras? We are serving andouille sausage biscuits and gravy. Now, this is vegan, right? It is all vegan. The entire cafe is vegan, so you can go in, you have all kinds of choices, you don't even have to think about it. <laughs> so what is in the, the, the sausage? The sausage is textured vegetable protein. And uh, so I just reconstitute it with broth and spices and then make a white sauce with soy milk and hemp milk. Is this something you serve regularly at Silly's? These we've been specialing out. Um, I just did uh, soy riso biscuits and gravy. And then so this is the andouille. And then I'll move into like maple and fennel and stuff like that. So it's been a special right now. Have you been to this Mardi Gras event here before? I have. This is, I took a couple of years off, but uh, we were fortunate we won three years in a row. And uh, then I had to take a little hiatus. And so we've been probably six, seven times. Yeah. Um, 
I was going to ask oh, Me Megan. Megan. Oh, Megan. Yeah. How do you how do you like uh, being here with, with the crowd and I certain? Love it. I enjoy it very much. I'm here with uh, Elena and Drew from um, Bayside American Cafe. What are you serving today? Uh, it's a Tennessee gumbo with uh, some biscuit crumbles and a spiced uh, hot honey. Where do you get the recipe? How do you get the recipe from? Uh, it's, I take a little bit uh, from my family down south and some traditional uh, Cajun cooking and sort of blend them together. Uh, big batch family meal style. And is this something that you regularly serve down at Bayside? It is not currently, but it has been a fan favorite amongst our staff as we've been testing it out. So we're thinking maybe we'll do something similar and throw it on the menu for specials. Now, you just gave me a biscuit with some honey on it. What's that all about? I've never had anything like it. It was very unusual. So we were trying to do a couple of different things with fusion and blending some things together. Um, and so with this, uh, with this biscuit, what we've tried to do is get a couple of different textures and then com combine the sweet and the heat so that they balance each other out. So we're trying to do layers with our flavors all around. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and where did you get the recipe from? Is this a family thing, or did you research it? Uh, uh, the, the roux is a, is a family recipe, a Tennessee base, uh, and then I built a traditional gumbo out of that. So it's, uh, it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, the heat's a little bit more layered and slow, and it's not quite as salty or savory. Is this the first time you're here at WMPG? This is my third year, and this is Drew's second. How has it been? How do you enjoy the party, the festive atmosphere? Just love this place and it gets busier and busier every year I'm, I feel like they're gonna need to expand pretty soon this uh, so far it's been my favorite part of March every year I just love cooking these big batches and having everybody tell me how good I am at it <laughs> well great thank you very much for talking to us thank you for your time I'm here with Egan and Bill from Whole Foods and uh, what have you prepared today today we have a chicken andouille and crab gumbo what, what goes into that? So we've got andouille sausage, which is locally made. I've got some Lake Pontchartrain blue crab gone in there too. I made a dark roux. It's got some okra and then the Holy Trinity, which is uh, onions, celery, and bell peppers. And I noticed that you're the only uh a uh, grocer here, really. We are. We are. I think we're the only retailer here. Um, but representing good food is just what Whole Foods does. So now, now Whole Foods does sell some prepared food, right? We do. We have a whole bar of you know prepared foods and meals that you can get hot. And this is one of the things that you uh, regularly serve there. This isn't regularly served there, but they will from time to time in the season put some gumbo on the on the hot. I don't know if this is putting you on the spot, but can you get all those ingredients at Whole Foods? You can actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I bought every single thing and made it with it. And where did you come up with the recipe? So the recipe is, I was taught a long time ago working in kitchens how to make gumbo by a mentor of mine. So making traditional gumbo is uh, a skill that I picked up from him. Oh, is this a traditional southern recipe? This is a very, very traditional southern recipe, yeah. Especially for this time of year, too, around Mardi Gras. And how have you found the reception to it here? People are loving it. People are loving it. Yeah, I'm really happy. And you guys have been here before. How do you like it coming to this event? We have been here before, and it's always great. I mean, you get the name out there. You get people coming by. You know, we see customers and things like that, too. So, Bill, have you tested a lot of the other foods here? Not yet, but I plan to get around to see what's up and maybe vote for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Olivia and Sarah from USM Dining, and uh, they've prepared something this year. What is it? It is a shrimp and crawfish etouffee. Now, it makes sense that you would be here at USM preparing something, and you actually won one year, right? Absolutely. And what's the challenge in coming up with a new recipe? It's keeping up with the now and day, the local uh, businesses that we have to compete with. Yeah. And, and uh, what, what is in this, uh, this dish? Um, so there's shrimp, there's crawfish, um, there's a little bit of rice in there, um, and there's like kind of, it's like a stew kind of base. Yeah, with local uh, Musum Valley Farm mushrooms. What's the, what the, what's the seasonings that you use? What gives it the flavor? A little cayenne, a little onion, garlic. And what's been the reception so far to this dish? Um, they love it. They really enjoy it. They said it has a lot of flavor, a lot of seasoning, um, and they can taste the shrimp and the crawfish. <laughs> I'm here with Greg from Lazari, and what have you prepared today for this uh, Mardi Gras? I have prepared a uh, shrimp, chicken, andouille sausage, and ham hock gumbo. We also have a red and white bean vegan gumbo for our vegan friends. What motivated you do to give a veg vegan option since I'm a vegetarian? I really appreciate that. Um, I've been here a number of years uh, 
This is probably the seventh or eighth year that I've done this. And in earlier years, uh, nobody actually had anything for the vegans and vegetarians. And being in the university is actually a pretty good community uh, of vegans. And I felt bad they didn't have anything to eat. So I started making, always have a vegan uh, option so that people could have something. To, Thank you, I appreciate everyone it. Everyone could have something. You, know. you have quite a history here. You, you actually know how this whole thing started. You were here when it first began? Yes, uh, we actually started over at WMPG back in the 90s. Uh, I was local music director at WMPG and a number of uh, DJs. We all love Fat Tuesday and uh, we all love uh, good food and Cajun music. So we started bringing in food ourselves and inviting the listeners to come down and celebrate with us. Uh, so we all cooked ourselves and after two or three years it, it just started to grow exponentially. We couldn't fit in the radio station anymore. So we invited some local restaurants to come down as well and uh, moved over here to the uh, to the uh, student center and it's gotten a little bigger every year since so WMPG is still going you know they say radio's dead but the station is alive and vibrant and doing really well and uh, the Cajun cook-off is one of the most fun events that they do every year I love coming down Fat Tuesday good food good music I'm here with Mitchell and Will from Salis and what have you prepared today we've got some uh, sausage and shrimp and grits that uh, it's pretty good pretty spicy this is the first time I'm seeing grits. Maybe I've, I got that wrong, but do you actually serve that over? Your, your, yeah. yeah, we put the uh, sausage and shrimp mix right over the grits. Uh, mixes together real well. Now, Silly's has been here for a few years, but this is the first year you're here? Yep, this is my first year working at the competition. I'm really excited for it. Well, how do you like the experience of it? Is it pretty wild? Oh, it's an absolute blast. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. It's just a great time. And what, what's, what actually goes, in, what's a special ingredient or what's really significant about what, what, you, what you, for your dish? Well, I mean, we stuck with the uh, holy trinity of uh, Cajun vegetables, which is like uh, green peppers and onions, and we stuck mushrooms in there as well. Usually it's celery, but we didn't have any of that on hand. Um, and then for the grits, we uh, added a whole lot of cheese to it to really give it a nice creamy base. So there's uh, smoked Gouda and Gruyere cheese in there to uh, really add some extra flavor. Well, that sounds like a good dish in itself. Have you been around to the other tables tested, taste testing? Oh yeah, I have. Definitely made a few laps to get a couple bites. Do you think you've got a, a good chance at winning? I like our chances, I'm yeah. Right. I think so. I think the grits, uh, people really appreciated that. Well, good luck. Thank you very much for talking to me. Definitely. I'm here with Bill and Corey from Lenny's in Westbrook. And, and what have you prepared today? Today we made a jambalaya bread pudding. And the bread pudding sounds like a dessert. Why did you decide to do that? Well, we really just wanted to think outside the box, be a little bit more creative, and go out on a different route. And so you're on the road today. You're all the way from Westbrook. I see uh, a trophy on the table. What does that mean? Uh, last year they, um, they won first place here, and uh, I was very proud of them, and we'll see how we do this year. And does it create a challenge for you, having created the winning dish last year, to create something new and different? Yeah, I mean, we went out on a whim and found out two days before it started last year, and this year we had more time to prepare, so it's a little stressful. Yeah. And did you come up with a recipe yourself? Yes. How did you How did you develop it? What How did What inspired you? Um, realistically, it was kind of we just wanted to make sure we could make enough food to feed all these people on a good budget, and this was creative. It was easy and fun. Is this something you're going to be serving at the restaurant? I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll find out. Yeah. I kind of stay out of the kitchen. That's Corey and Derek's show. They do do that thing, you know? But I'm sure you've gotten around and tasted the other foods, huh? Yes, actually, yeah. There's some great food here today. So, But we'll keep our fingers crossed that we come in first place, you know? All right. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Well, things are wrapping up here, and for my first time here at the WMPG Mardi Gras, I sure enjoyed meeting all these great local chefs. If you haven't been already to one of these events, you might think of coming next year and just appreciating the community that's out here with WMPG.